morning, uh, Yvonne, and thank you for uh, coming on this call. I know you're very busy. I know the situation is getting crazy everywhere in the world. And so, you know, I really want to thank you for making the time to talk with me about, you know, the situation about this uh, crisis that we're all going through worldwide. So, first of all, could you please introduce yourself and then uh, tell us uh, what you do, who you are, and uh, where you are? Okay, yes. Uh, uh, hello, uh, I'm Yvonne Sam, and I am based in Shanghai. And I have been here for a year. So uh, in my role, I'm the head of uh, transformation, leadership and culture. And I'm currently working within, um, well, I probably shouldn't tell you <laughs> just in case. Um, but anyway, I, I'm, I'm in, in a beauty tech group. Uh, and uh, we are really, um, I've been very impressed with China. Uh, because in my role, I, I am Australian uh, of Chinese descent. But I've lived around the world, and uh, this what this is my assignment first time based in China, uh, and um, because I feel that I, I I thought I was quite open-minded, you know, with my with my very worldly views, having lived in the Middle East, lived in Malaysia, lived in Australia, visited, of course, <laughs> into the U.S. and um, and when I first arrived here, I, I mean, I, I just was quite amazed at how beautiful Shanghai is, how well organized it is, uh, that it is a really a very modern city. It has 26 million people, um, but you don't feel, you can feel the buzz, but you don't feel like um, you're stuck. You know, like there, there doesn't seem to be the traffic jams in the way that I know it and the, and the metros run really well. Hmm. So I guess I wasn't surprised when, uh, when we, it was announced that this pandemic had occurred uh, in Wuhan and that they were going to basically lock down the cities because it was, cre it, it, it was a, a novel virus and it was very infectious. Um, and the authorities were very decisive saying that we were basically going to close down the cities. We were even going to stop you know, interstate tra uh, travel. It was right at Chinese New Year. So uh, actually a lot of people weren't at work anyway, but we were told to stay away from work uh, and um, basically stay in your homes uh, and, and everybody cooperated. So it was, I mean, for the first time, I saw Shanghai totally like a ghost town, wow. you know, a city of 26 million people, but I think at least 10 million had left the city anyway to go away. Um, and the authorities like acted really quickly and the people were very cooperative. So um, I actually felt at first a little bit fearful that, you know, like it's very contagious, could it occur to me? But every day that passed, um, I felt safe because everybody was cooperating. And even though we were in the most dangerous country in terms of risk, uh, there was a certain a, a calm and peace about it that uh, we, uh, it ad ended up making, letting me make a decision around okay what can i do <laughs> what can i do to battle this um pandemic and my husband and i who actually both travel a lot in our work was actually in lockdown for four full weeks in our apartment and we were so glad that we had reflection time that we could actually sit and think about how we could keep healthy because if we keep healthy it'll boost our immune system and we could also tell our friends and family around the world that we're doing our bit. We're keeping healthy so that you don't have to worry. So please don't worry about us. And there was almost a solidarity even from around the world as we talked to our friends uh, and family that they were glad that we were really positive about it. So, um, so in a way, I'll tell you my reaction when it started to do a tour around the world, the, 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 the novel virus. And uh, I actually started to feel like I was having a second wave of, of the attack because now I, I feel unsafe for my family and my friends. And um, there was a certain grief around not being able to be there for them. And there was a bit of anger around, I guess, certain people wanting their individual rights around the world and therefore being reasonably selfish yeah. about trying to beat this together. So not to say that China got it all right, but it was, it, there was a huge difference about how I reacted for my family because I think they felt safe for me, but I didn't feel so safe about them. 
so there was a whole wave of emotions that 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 came out the second time hearing what was happening around you know in italy with all, all you know you you having to choose between who you can treat because of the the lack of um resuscitators and and yeah it, it, it was it was it uh, was and and in australia my own <laughs> Our own prime minister is being so laissez-faire around whether we close schools or we don't, and and yeah, I think it, it created a whole new um, level of emotion. Yeah. But once again, I had to take a deep breath and say, maybe it's part of the world's journey. We all have to handle in our own way, and the best way is to think of the bigger picture uh, and give our blessings and gratitude that we're still around to even be able to think about it. Yes. And I can therefore do my bit in trying to keep as healthy as possible to not give advice, but to listen uh, whenever people rang and called, be always available. And I think I've been more connected with a lot of people as a result of this. Uh, and one more thing too, at a level of thinking about mother nature, the power of mother nature, regardless of what the cause was, if there, if there was a, a way that Mother Nature could call her naughty children to order and say, naughty, naughty kids, go to your room and think about what naughty things you've done in the earth. <laughs> and when you're sorry enough and come up with a solution, then maybe you can come out and play again. You know, there was a little bit of humor around that, but at, at, at some level it was that, you know, Mother Nature had the power to actually take care of the most, the naughtiest of her, cre her creations, <laughs> uh, who thought that they were, were arrogant enough to control the world, but really she can create a little bug that can, you know, uh, cause us to be like Goliath that falls, uh, you know, like the David and Goliath story. So it, it was, uh, it, that, that was kind of the meditation that I've been having around that. That's great because, um, you know, these type of crises bring you in front of yourself and how we have contributed to what it is and how the people is contributing. And so that's a, that's a beautiful thought to be able to use it to, to reflect on how we've been up until now because we don't know it's going to be from now on. And that's a, another uncertainty, at least all over the world. We don't really know how that is going to affect the social life, how that's going to affect the business also. You know, I wonder, is there a drop in business uh, on your side or is is that business as usual or have you felt some kind of uh, um, practical um, restriction even on the business side? Well, absolutely. I mean, I guess I'm, I'm fort fortunate to work for a multinational company that, is, uh, that made a decision when, when this hit that we would freeze head count, but we wouldn't uh, uh, lay off anyone. So we were asked to sort of rally behind because the business obviously would drop. Uh, the interesting thing that the um, offline business has dropped, but we do have, I guess, online capability. So which means that it accelerated the e-commerce part of it, which was in a way a strategy that we were aiming towards. But one of the key things that it made us think in the business is how quickly we could accelerate our vision of, you know, um, a, a digital world, uh, a sustainable world, to be able to work uh, remotely as remote teams, <laughs> to be able to work from home and the flexibility of it. So it was almost, I think, we looked at the opportunity to accelerate our, the, the vision. Now, no doubt, of course, there's always the fear that, of course, business uh, is going to be um, changing. But it was once again, um, looking at it as an opportunity, as opposed to it being a terrible thing. Um, I think business around the world will be affected because I mean of course we are a global company so therefore it would be affected but I would say that uh, if everybody sort of said like take this uh, opportunity to think when the paradigm shifts and the whole yeah. paradigm is shifted for business and the way we live and work um, see it as an opportunity that everybody's it's level playing field everybody starts at zero so how do you see that as an opportunity and maybe once again it's a way of us sharing and, and stop being uh, so competitive as to look at oppressing another group or another industry but actually to look at how we can prop each other up so um, I hope it brings out the best in us I know it's brought out some of our worst behaviors as well um, 
but but therefore yes uh we we've seen like a lot of the little shops close up but i know here in shanghai there because of the 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 the, the cooperation of the people and we can wear masks and people respect physical distancing they've even developed an app within two weeks of the problem of a health code app since we all have passports and id cards that could show whether you had been in proximity to someone infected so that a store can easily stop you from coming for like hair services or medical services um, if you had been uh, at risk so that they could actually isolate you accordingly so i think it's actually helped business come back faster a lot of the small businesses i think got a got not necessarily i don't know about the stimulation packages but a lot of the uh, rentals uh, in the city center i think the um the landlord some of them were government bodies anyway allowed them to uh not pay rent for a month just so that they didn't lay off anyone so so there was a certain like i said very decisive things around that that was really looking at the greater community as opposed to uh, the um, the individual. Now, I know um, there was one, one reaction I, I felt uh, today that uh, when, when it happened, because I'm an expat here and I didn't know what normal was anyway, I was just in awe of the, the machine where, you know, ev everything happened. And to me, I, I saw it as a, you must trust your leadership enough for you to have that psychological safety to not question and just cooperate. Um, and then I spoke to two groups, a, a younger group of people and an elderly group of people. The elderly uh, Chinese were saying, well, you know, it's our traditions. We are about family and the whole country's a family and we back each other. I spoke to the younger people and they said, at first we had a fear because there was a lot of things going on in social media around the young people saying, how can they clamp us down? And you know, like there, there was that, 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 that fear that, that came out in dissent, but it, their, their questions were answered very quickly when medical, all the medical authorities and everything ran so smoothly that it, the, the behavior quelled the, the dissent. And to me, maybe what we're seeing around the world is we are going to question our governments it's a natural human nature when you think about it. And it's also the youth who want to do that. But the best thing any leadership can do it, whether it's in a company level or a government level, is to be consistent, to take action as you would in a crisis, to be decisive and clear, communicate, communicate, communicate. And soon all that dissent goes away because we are safe. We do feel safe because we actually are clear of what's communicated and what is communicated delivers tangibly in actions and you can't question it anymore. So, so it was very interesting. Uh, and I know you asked me a question about how business has changed. Um, I think business uh, definitely has decreased, um, but there's a certain level of excitement in some parts of the business to say this is an opportunity to remove things that no longer works because this is the best time to test it because nobody's going to resist you if you're going to have an idea um, particularly if it involves digital or doing something different because we're all not being able to serve our customers face to face etc etc wow and uh, wow that's that's interesting you giving me a great overview of everything now one thing that uh, it stays in my mind while you're talking is like these uh, paradigm shift you know that's a that's one of the most interesting things you know at least for me because you know the work we do it's on paradigm you know and and i like to for you to expand on that you know because there is a paradigm shift in many ways but as you say in many places there's a lot of um um tension between government and people there's a lot of uh, distrust there's a lot of uh, you know um, a lot of um, underground you know kind of uh, uh, people that are trying to oppose or you know rebel from uh, this thing and so what what would you well even what would you say the best paradigm shift could be in this case? how can we use this crisis i would say uh, at best um well as i said uh everybody has now got to um consider working in at distance so um 
the way people um, maybe deliver their services <laughs> because we have to be distant is creating the, this paradigm shift. So in a way, we've all been forced without notice into something that we haven't been prepared for. So I guess um, if you are some, if, if your company culture is one that holds on to traditions and structure and planning, um, you need to <laughs> kind of trust the parts of your business or the people uh, uh, that are the outliers in your business to maybe come up with ideas that are less structured, less planned and more agile, I would say. Um, and that's going to be hard. This culture does eat strategy for breakfast, as we all know. And as a leader, I think it, um, it is also time to empower your people because no matter how great your minds are, this is for the first time a situation that has no reference structure before. Every, everybody that steps into the next step into their business, you got to take one day at a time. So you can only test and learn. Yeah. So the more people are uh, allowed in your company or your, your, your nation to test and learn and, uh, uh, you know, under, uh, under strict boundaries, because I think it's also very, very important that organizations and countries make very, very clear what, what, it, what are the boundaries by which we will play. Because as all children also know, if you know the rules of the playground, then you can play happily because you know these are the rules. But if you have to keep pushing the boundaries because I don't know where it is, you, you create this dissent and rebellion because, you know, well, they didn't tell us what to do anyway, so we're going to try all sorts of you know, weird things. So I think you've got to, yeah, it's almost like a parent-child relationship where um, we, at, at the most, and I guess all of us are more senior to another group of people, and we're also junior to, or, or you know, a, a bottom to another top person so i think um it paradigm is really about when you have an opportunity to be the top still listen to the bottoms because yes. they they have ideas but set your uh your ground rules or your team charter really clear make it simple and easy because you don't need to make the situation more complex and then from that play the game in a way it is a game you know, it, it is a game of um, uh, maybe new relationships, the yeah. new way of relating to each other, new way of relating to our customers, new ways of relating to our colleagues. Yeah. Well, one thing, one thing, you know, um, on that uh, note, basically, you know, I'm Italian and I don't know if you know, but, you know, we are, we love to connect and, you know, to hug and to be physical with each other. And do you think, you know, this distancing will affect intimacy, will affect connection between people or, you know, is there a way that we may reframe that type of um, connection into different ways? You know, what do you think about that? I love what you said. And this, that was, I love the definition of, uh, I, I, I mean, people have used in public health care, social distancing, and I beg to defer, I call it physical distancing. So we cannot physically be together, but we have become even more social than ever. Um, and knowing um, like necessity is the mother of invention, I am sure that when everybody started heading to their zoom platforms or their skype platforms or their webex or whatever that they use as social connection um uh, the bandwidth dropped i mean a lot of people saying their systems were crashing but very quickly engineers got on and started to increase the bandwidth whatever it takes so i think we will learn a better way of connection virtually that maybe will become more human i i mean i, I do believe it because a lot of times, I mean, as long as we can see each other and can see facial expressions and gestures, uh, uh, we, we feel close enough because we know we can't see one another. So someone could be in the next building, but we're not allowed to see them. We can, we can you know, still we, we're still socially connected. And like I said, in the last um, couple of weeks, as things were getting more and more uh, dire in the rest of the world, and I got friends in Italy or friends in South Africa or friends in, you know, Australia and US, um, 
I found that I was making time to connect with them. And so in terms of intimacy, it's not the kind of intimacy we use to where I can actually hug you, but I can hold you in an energetic way that I feel intentions cross uh, space and time. So I think, I wonder whether it will help us develop parts of our brain where we haven't practiced doing that. You know, like we talk about yogis that can meditate to a level where they levitate and have out of body experiences. I mean, I wonder whether this gives us the opportunity to maybe graduate to that. I mean, I'm, I'm probably talking science fiction at the moment, but we have heard of people who can do that. And it's a lot of it from practicing, being really connected with their bodies. Well, maybe when we don't have to spend all our time, you know, queuing up in an airport terminal, <laughs> maybe we'll spend some time, you know, meditating and doing yoga as I have been with my husband and start tuning in our bodies and maybe really connecting with that parts of our brain and pineal gland or whatever it is that people talk about that you know we are electrical chemical bodies anyway so what is it that maybe we will create a way of, of connection mm. i um i actually did a little webinar with uh with uh with our group uh because uh, one of the requests when everything went down in china mm. and the china team was very very um uh how shall i say very uh resilient and they said well if we're all in lockdown we need to communicate so the learning team uh created a learning never stops so they did some live webinars and they asked people what they wanted to hear and everybody wanted to talk about you know remote working remote from home how to manage stress in the VUCA situation and uh, i ran a, a situation where I, I said you need to maintain your energy uh, at all levels, physical, intellectual, uh, emotional, and spiritual. So physical, of course, get more sleep, you know, eat the right foods, um, you know, exercise. Um, intellectual, stimulate yourself with not just the bad news, you know, read about things that you haven't had a chance to read about and uh, learn something and emotionally. Well, that was a hard one because I can't go and, you know, hug my my dad who's you know, in living in Kuala Lumpur and my children are like, studying in Australia. So how do you do that? And I, and I remembered that one of the things that I learned was the Ho'oponopono, Ho'opono, that ability to think of being grateful to someone and thanking them and loving them by imagining them being in front of you. So I actually offered that to people. I said, if your loved ones are not with you, why don't you imagine them, you know, being in front of you and say, I love you. I, I, I thank you. I forgive you. I, and I, I, please forgive me for not being with you, but I'm grateful to have you in your life. And I think I got a lot of um, feedback around, my goodness, we, we often do do that anyway. It's kind of common sense, but we've stopped doing it because we can actually get on this social media thing and usually just kind of, or, or, or we can jump on a plane and visit family. So it was really interesting. So maybe when we have to be in lockdown, even though my mother lives two streets away, maybe, you know, I can just, uh, if, if, if our video bandwidth is no good, I can still imagine her in front of me and I can still talk to her. And, um, and I think maybe it will create a new level of intimacy. That's what I'm saying. Uh, that's that's great and, and 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 i like your spirit i like your way of approaching this because it gives life and i know you know that's one of the main things you know the, the way we approach the situation will give us the experience we 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 have about it and i think you know your experience comes through very clearly and i love that and even i love even you know the part you've said about you know it's a game you know obviously it's not a frivolous game but it has rules and, and if we abide by the rules we can be free to play the game and and to be part of the change and actually we we can lead the change if we can uh, be the way you are being and I, and I love i love i, I love the way you've uh, communicated these things and i really like you know the possibility to uh, um, talk to you and so um i, I will uh, i will let you go in a minute and i first of all i thank you very much for being with me in this call and if you don't mind in a couple of weeks you know if i, I like to just uh, check in if there's a possibility just even a short uh, on a short base you know just to see how things are evolving but uh, you gave us a lot to think about and you gave me a lot to think about so i really want to thank you for this i it is my pleasure and then i guess that just to finish things off you know as we're talking about how we can sustain our own energy spiritually and it doesn't have to be religious you know a lot of spirit is about finding meaning in our work meaning in our living and if we can find meaning in what this coronavirus pandemic is giving us some 
slow down time to consider what's most important. I think it's giving us a new way of living. I mean, if we can actually do that. And so in a way, I, I, I'm, I'm sad if there are people who have lost family members or friends to the virus. I've actually got some friends who are infected, but who are actually recovering, which is, you know, you know, blessings for me. But I know that a lot of people are going through hardships. But we often know that it is our, at the edge of betrayal or, or our greatest trials is where our greatest growth is. And I guess I hope I leave that hope with people to say, even if you've lost someone, um, what if you are remaining, what can you do to change how we are so that we are better human beings and we deserve to be on earth? Thank you. I hold that last sentence very, very strongly. And, and I hope who's listening to us will, will get the hope that comes out of it and, uh, and the possibility to lead in this new world that we don't even know how it's going to look like and how it's going to be. Yes, but yes. Thank you. thank you again, Yvonne. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you, David. It's a real pleasure. And thank you for inviting. And I hope that, you know, I'm sending blessings to Italy. Thank you. That uh, you, you all may rise above this as Phoenix from the ashes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.